Greetings and welcome to In-Depth, I'm DK Roster. This is part two of a series focusing on the National AIDS Coordinating Committee with the intention of educating the public on HIV AIDS as it relates to transmission, testing, treatment and support, etc. Also encouraging persons infected or affected by HIV and AIDS to accept treatment and support resources available and to clarify any misconceptions on HIV and AIDS. Now this second installment focuses on the role of the HIV helpline as it pertains to HIV transmission, testing and linkage to care. Now we do so with coordinator of the National HIV Helpline, Crystal Wilson. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Wilson. I want to start off asking about information, though, in terms of what kind of information do you use in terms of how the helpline is run? Okay, so the helpline is run 19, well, 18 hours a day. So that's from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight. And it's a toll-free service, so persons can contact the helpline by calling 800-4448. That's 800 for hiv we are also on social media, that's Facebook and Instagram, at HIV Helpline TT. So persons can contact the line that way as well. And definitely not asking for specifics, but what are some of the range of topics uh, addressed, the questions that persons have? What, why, why would an individual call the helpline? Okay. So in most cases, persons who are living with HIV would call the helpline. And this would be because they may need psychosocial and emotional support. So persons would reach out to the helpline for that, as well as persons wanting general information on HIV, um, information on HIV, AIDS, and other sexually transmitted infections. Persons would call the helpline for that information as well, as well as linkage to care. We do have peer navigators on the helpline, so persons will call the helpline to be linked into care. And how important is it, no, you said a little earlier that most times it would be persons who are infected. That also uh, begs the question that there are persons who are not necessarily infected. And I guess that speaks to those who are affected. Uh, do they have different types of questions? Yes. So persons who are infected as well as persons who are infected do call the helpline. So persons who are affected by HIV, they would call for information. They may call to get resources, such as um, where they can access certain things. They may also call for psychosocial support and telecounseling for themselves as well as for loved ones. Now, in terms of transmission being something that is, that is discussed, uh, and also looking at samples for testing, I know some people are afraid of needles. Are there different ways <laughs> yes, of testing? Yes, there are different ways of testing. So we do have an oral test, which is a self-test kit, right? Um, this initiative started last year. So we do have self-test kits and oral tests. So we do have oral tests, which is a rapid test. So you do get test results like within 20 minutes of taking an oral test. And persons can call the helpline if they want to know where they can access a self-test kit, as well as if they want to assistance interpreting the results of the self-test as well. That is one of the things I wanted to ask. Yeah. Because one thing to say, People can drive through and say, okay, well, we're ordering this from this mm -hmm. drive through restaurant or whatever. But a test that you're supposed to be doing by yourself uh, is capacity built to say, okay, well, this is the proper way to do it. Uh, take me through that process. Yes. So we have active listeners who have been trained, right? So they can walk the person through from receiving the test. How do they prepare for the test? So one of the things, you know, we make sure to tell people is that you don't want to have anything to eat at least 30 minutes before taking the test, right? You're not going to brush your teeth or use mouthwash or anything like that. So we have active listeners there taking them through each and every step. Even after they receive the results of the test, the active listener is there to tell them what is the next step to do, just in case the test is reactive. And during the pandemic, we've been hearing words like antibody, antigen. How do these words make the distinction as it pertains to HIV testing tests? Okay, so we hear antigen. The test that we have, um, most common tests are rapid tests, right? You get the results within 20 minutes. And this would be 
the oral test as I spoke about earlier, as well as you know the test where you get a little thing, you know, a little prick on your finger, and we use a blood sample there. Um, those tests test for HIV antibodies, whereas the laboratory tests test for antigen. So those are that is both um, antibody tests as well as an antigen test. An antigen test basically looks at the viral load of a person who is HIV positive. How important are active listeners or those peer listeners? Because it may be one thing to say, okay, well, I know how to do that test. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to do the test, but I get the test and I go home, I ready myself, and I've taken that test and I'm, those 20 minutes are passing. Yes. <laughs> Do I call someone during that period of time? Do I call after? What is, what is that process like? So they can call persons during that time. We ask persons to call us because that 20 minutes can feel like eternity. Yeah, so we want persons to call the helpline because we are there to provide support, right? Emotional and psychosocial support. So the active listener, whatever you need at that point in time, the active listener is trained and able to provide that support to the caller. We have two minutes before we take the break, Ms. Wilson. Three words I want you to break down for me, please. Linkage to care. Okay. So linkage to care is basically when we think of care, we think of treatment, right? So when someone is newly diagnosed, we want to link them into care. We want them to start treatment as soon as possible, right? So for persons who are PLHIV or persons living with HIV, they take medication called antiretroviral um, treatment, right? So linkage to care is starting that treatment as soon as possible, right? Yeah. And with that, we take a short break. We are speaking about the National HIV Helpline with coordinator, Ms. Crystal, Crystal Wilson. Stay with us. We return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking with Crystal Wilson, coordinator of the National HIV Helpline. And we, we dove into services and breaking down terms, terminology, definitions. But if we were to ask about the overarching goal of the helpline, what would that be, Ms. Wilson? Well, the, um, the goal of the helpline is basically to mitigate the effect of HIV on the population of Trinidad and Tobago. I like the fact you talk about the population of Trinidad and Tobago. Does someone have to be uh, a national? Is it that they just have that number and call it? Uh, is, it inclu is it inclusive like that? So yes, the number is inclusive like that. So we are not only for persons who are PLHIV or persons infected or affected by HIV, but for the general population. And so migrants included as well. Yeah. And do you have do you have persons from the general population calling? They, they haven't had a test. They don't think that they need to have a test. Even that might be a, a something to talk about in terms of thinking whether or not you need to have a, a, a test done. Mm -hmm. But just trying to find out a little more. Do you find persons like that calling in as well? Um, we do have persons calling in like that. Um, more, in most cases, you know, someone believed that they would have been exposed to HIV, so they would call the helpline wondering, you know, what do I do next? What is the next step, right? And when we receive those calls, we guide persons accordingly. And it's important to know that a lot of people are not aware of some of the services that are available to persons. So let's say, for example, someone... Um, believe that they were exposed to HIV. And this could be sexual assault, this could be occupational hazard in the healthcare system. There is PEP, which is post-exposure prophylaxis, right? And this is medication taken within the first 72 hours after exposure for 28 days. And this is going to reduce um, the risk or reduce the likeliness of this person contracting HIV. And I'm glad you speak about that because sometimes people think there's only one way that you can be exposed. There's only one way that you can find yourself at mm -hmm. risk. But looking at those services and the fact that it's a toll-free service, once again, that number is 800-4-HIV or 800-4448. But looking at 
someone who is newly diagnosed? What are some of the things that are going through that person's mind and how does the helpline really help ease that person into this new way of being? Yeah. So that's a very interesting question. And what I would say is because our active listeners are so trained and we do have persons supporting the helpline who are PLHIV themselves and would have experienced that they know how to manage such calls, right? We do have persons supporting the helpline who come from many um, NGO groups, well, at least five NGO groups right here in Trinidad that deal that on a daily basis deal with the HIV response. So they help navigate that person and reassure that person that, you know, you can live a long, healthy life with HIV once you are on treatment. Once you adhere onto ART, you can live a long, healthy life. Is it only HIV AIDS that the helpline would deal with or is there other sorts of education with regard to other sexually transmitted infections? So we do talk to persons about other sexually transmitted infections as well, because I mean, it goes hand in hand, right? If persons are having unprotected sex, they are at risk of contracting a sexually transmitted infection. So we do provide that information and let persons know where they can be tested. We also promote, you know, partner testing as well, which is also important. That begs the question, how easy it, is it sometimes? Well, you could go and test it if you want. I could, I feel in healthy. Are, are, are those some of the conversations that you have at, at some point in time in terms of like one person out of the partnership saying, okay, well, I'm willing to, I think we should, but then there's a little pushback from someone else? I mean, it is. I mean, we live in Trinidad and Tobago and sex and HIV and all these different things are very taboo. So a lot of times persons are uncomfortable talking about it, but it is important that you have that conversation with your partner. It is. And looking at conversations, there may be an NGO, there may be a group of individuals. Is there or an, even an individual who says, I think I have what it takes and I want to be part of this. What's the process for helping to build capacity for having people become part of the helpline? Is, is that something that you do? Are you always on the lookout for another active listener? <laughs> um, so currently we are not on the lookout for a new active listener. However, um, you never know, right? And we would like to build the capacity of the public we would like to build the capacity of persons who would like to volunteer in the field as well, right? So if anyone is interested in becoming a part of the helpline or volunteering on the helpline, they can contact the HIV helpline. They could provide their information to one of the active listeners and they would pass it on to me. I think one of the other things that, ha what, what, that the helpline does is link individuals to resources. What kind of resources are you sending people to outside of that immediate toll-free call? Okay. So in the event that someone calls and they want information on testing, there are over 60 testing sites in Trinidad and Tobago, right? And this is in the health, um, the public health sector, as well as we have private um, testing sites for HIV and sexually transmitted infections as well. So we link persons to those. We also link persons to peer navigators. We link persons to NGOs, to um, peer counseling. So there are a lot of um, resources that are available to persons and we link them to those resources. Ms. Wilson, speak to the person who says, I want to call, mm -hmm. but I frighten that people <laughs> end up in my business. Okay. So for that person, I would say our helpline is confidential. All the calls that we receive, we do not give information on the type of caller who called the line. You do not even have to provide your name. You can give an alias, that's fine with us, right? The main purpose of the helpline is to assist persons and link them into care and provide them with the right information. There are a lot of misconceptions regarding HIV and sexually transmitted infections, and we would like to provide persons with that information, with correct information, right? And and I'm glad because we are, we're also going to speak to some of those myths and we're going to do that in another installment of this okay. conversation with the National AIDS Coordinating Committee. But speak to me about the importance of that 
first the 72 hours once more, please, because you started and you dealt with it. But expand on that a little bit, please, in terms of someone who thinks that they may have been exposed as a possibility, mm -hmm. the importance of that 72 hours, their actions inside of that. Okay, so as I said, PEP, um, which is post-exposure prophylaxis, right, is given within the first 72 hours, the first three days, right? It is important for someone to start PEP immediately because after that three days, the medication no longer works, right? It's not going to be as effective and you want to get the best chance possible, right? So within the first three days, you know, go to the healthcare, um, talk to someone and they're going to do an assessment and put you on to PEP. All right, now we know it's 6 a.m. to 12 midnight. We know the number is 800-4448 or 4HIV. Mm -hmm. What is the last thing in terms of just under a minute that we have that you'd want to let people know, persons know about the HIV helpline test? Okay, so as I said before, um, it's a toll-free service. Our calls are confidential, right? We do not record our calls, anything like that. There are trained persons working on the helpline that are there to provide service. That can be psychosocial service or emotional support to persons living with and infected with HIV. And with that, we want to thank you so much, Crystal Wilson, coordinator of the National HIV Helpline. And this has been In-Depth with me, DK Rostar, on behalf of the entire TTT News team. Thank you so much for joining us.